around here and set up. Um, and it, it'll just take a second for me to do that. So while you do your, uh, you know, finishing touches here real quick, I'm going to turn my attention over to my iPad. I'm going to make sure I turn my volume all the way down and uh, get logged in here so that um, I'll be able to see you at the same time. So one yes. second here and oh, now it did a split screen on me. Here we go, full screen. Oh, I'm so excited to have you here today. This is gonna be so much fun. I'm excited and I'm kind of nervous too because I've never done one of these before. Oh, wow, okay, cool. Yeah. So I'm, I'm super, super excited. Okay. So I'm in, let's see. I want to make sure that I can, uh, that I'm in and I can see you. I think I'm in, let's see. I'm going to refresh this page real quick. How are you today, Margo? I'm, I'm doing great. I'm so excited to be here. Yay, me too. <laughs> okay. Yep. It looks like I'm in. Let me make this back so I can see it. I can see you well. Are you able to see me on your uh, laptop? I am. Okay, wonderful. Now this, uh, welcome everybody. Margo Farnsworth is here. We're going to be doing some Turkish towels, shibori fold. Uh, many of you are familiar with her work and I'm super excited. Um, let's see, I'm just, I'm fine tuning here as I make sure that I'm, able to follow along so oh look at how gorgeous that is that's beautiful is that what we're going to be doing today it is Woo! this is actually this is the very first one i did i love it it's gorgeous i did this one in uh ashes to ashes and uh black magic from happy cat tie-dye Um, I do have Ashes to Ashes. I'm not sure if I have Black Magic quite yet, but that is fantastic. All right, you guys, I want to remind you guys about the messages. And Amanda, I'm glad you're here because you can help um, do all the reminders. They have changed the way that my live chat is looking, but you want to make sure that you set your messages to all messages and not to top messages so that you can follow along in real time with us. Um, otherwise, you know, you don't, you don't, you miss the conversation. So let's see, who do we have here? We've got way down yonder hobby farm. Teresa's here. Amanda Grace is here. Kelly. Oh, hi, Kelly. Kelly, I sure hope you're feeling better today. I know you said you were feeling a lot better today. Uh, Leanne is here. Uh, Brent Walker. Uh, Sue. I need to put my glasses on. This is so little. Art Dyes, Aaron McMahon, Sadiq Buckley, Peg is here, Susie, Moon Dyes, hi Lila. All right, okay. So I feel pretty confident that I'm in and I got my mess of um, towels here. So Margo and I are gonna be working on the Turkish towels. I hope you guys were able to go to the Turkish dowry on Etsy um, and get your towels if you're going to be tying along with us today. And if you didn't, this video will go up. Uh, well, this live will go up as a video so you can go back and, and watch it again um, at a different time. Um, so for those of you that are following along, so Margo, what are we starting with today? I think that we should start with one of the hand towels, one of the smaller towels, uh, because they're very easy to fold. And um, I did a test fold on these earlier, and it's going to be um, it's going to be a pretty quick fold to get us started. Okay. And for those of you that want to follow along, what should they grab? They should have their. So my towel is pre-soaked in soda ash, and I spun it out in my pan to spin dryer. What did you do to yours? Exact same thing. Okay. So. So it's still damp. So yeah, mine is barely damp from the panda. Um, for those of you that are tying along, what else should they grab if they're going like for right this moment? What, what else do we need at this second? Rubber bands. Rubber bands. Uh, okay. I got my rubber bands. Okay. Oh, Greg is here. Wanda. <laughs> Wanda Parker cat. Okay. 
So uh, smooth it out. Does it matter if the seam is up or down? Because you know what it I doesn't, mean? It doesn't really matter. Just okay. because, um, you know, the layers are going to be flipping back and forth in the fold. So it doesn't really matter. How do you have yours? Do you have the seam up or seam down? Like well, the, you know, so, along the side, the edges there. Does yeah. So, so what I'll be doing is the very first thing is I'll be folding it in quarters. So okay. I fold it in half lengthwise <clears throat> and then I fold it in half widthwise. Okay. So I just folded mine in half smoothing out a little bit of those wrinkles as I go. And then I'm just gonna fold it right in half again. Okay, so, and we've got that 20 second delay, you guys. So you have to, to bear with us. I've never done this before, so I'm gonna need to watch and follow along with Margo um, and give her time and then give the, you know, the uh, system time. Okay, so I think, yep, I've done it just like you. Okay, now my question is, and it may not matter. I have in front of me, like the, where I folded it up, like this, you know, like the center point, and then I have the edges that's at the top of my table. Does it matter? Does that make sense what I'm trying to say? It does. Here, well, I'll just spin my round so that you and I are the same, oriented the same way. Okay. Okay. So now we're gonna take the edge that's away from us. We're going to fold that down towards the center, but just that top two layers. Okay, just the top two layers. All right, folding it towards my tummy. Okay, right? Yep. All right. Yep. Okay. And then, and then smoothing and then, out any like lumps and bumps along the way, right? Correct. And okay. then we're going to get that other side folded to the outer edge. So what I did there was probably a little tricky there but I just I just grabbed right there where, where the fold is at and I just picked it up and flipped that side down and that that laid that top layer on top okay right We're basically accordion folding this okay that right. yeah no but totally makes sense just picked it right up off the table and yeah. then so now what I have is basically so if I'm looking at my plates I've got um, and for those of you at home, if you can see that I've got, and Margo as well, I've got the two, the two pleats on this side. And then my, my one side has got, you know, all the, like the open edges and I've got one, two, three, four, five open edges on the other. If, if that helps anybody understand, like, you know, make sure that you, you got your big accordions correctly. So I'll just show it again. I got the two here. And then on the side away from me, like up at the top of my table, I've got all those multiple pleats or not pleats, but uh, edges, or I guess they're pleats. I don't know. Okay. I think I'm, I think I'm with you. Okay. All right. Now at this point, it, it doesn't matter as much um, when we're doing this as to which point you start with folding down. Um, when we go to do a Farnsworth fold later on another video, that's going to be more vital to know where that center top is. But right now with this, it's not as important because we're just setting up triangles going down it. Okay. Okay. So we're going to pick a corner. It doesn't really matter which. Okay. And we're going to fold it down and it's going to be half of an equilateral triangle. So right now, this may seem a little bit confusing, but it can get worked out as we go along. So okay. this is just getting it started, but we can adjust this after we do our next fold. Okay, so I'm seeing you now. So you didn't fold it all the way, you folded it halfway. Correct. Well, like, yeah. For lack of, I'm not saying it correctly, but you know, for in, in layman's term, the way I, my brain works, I'm folding it halfway. Ooh, that's kind of thick. Okay. Yes. Yeah, and that that's why I I didn't do too many uh, accordion fold layers because it it would get really bulky on this small little triangle. And I. 
Margot, I'm somewhat, somewhat, not massively, but somewhat of a perfectionist. And if it's like, oh, if everything's not perfect, then I get flustered. But okay. So I feel like I've, I've got my first like halfway triangle thing. So now we're going yep. to hold that and flip it over. Okay, I'm watching. I'm going to watch for that 20 second delay. So if you've already done it, I'm, I'm waiting for it to catch up. So I'm going to watch how you flip it. Like when you say flip it, you just mean like pick it up and flip it. Okay. Just pick it up and flip it. Okay. And then you're going to take that corner that's away from you and come across to the edge that's towards you to make that equilateral triangle. Okay. And you'll see where um, this is the point where you'll, if you need to adjust this first half of a triangle, you can do that now. Okay, so I'm bringing it up. So like a flag fold. Woo, okay. All right. Yep. Okay. I think, I think I got it. Uh, it may not be perfect, but it's a start. Right. Well, and, and that's the, um, one of the things with this is as we go along, we can kind of like fiddle with it and you know even it out as we go okay so but that looks great i'm watching you on on tape and it looks great and then we'll do that whole same thing again is oh wait flipping. a minute there's you got yours sorry not to interrupt you i just i'm looking close because my eyeballs are i tried to make a straight triangle you're actually making oh. like a triangle triangle okay right it's an equilateral triangle so you're, you're of talking course, smart words that I don't use. Okay, so, I got and, it. Now, and, can you see mine? Look and see. Does that look better? Because it's instead of it being a straight line, it's more uh, like now I've got a triangle in front of me. Yeah. Here, let me let me lift it up, and I'm putting it right in front of the camera. Uh, yep. Yeah. So hopefully you you guys will get a good picture of that, but. All three points of the triangle should be the same angle. So I'm going to set that puppy back down. Yeah, you guys, you can tell Margo's done this before. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so um, when I originally started doing this, I had acrylic templates that I bought off of Etsy that are made for doing shibori. And... Um, they're supposed to be clamped on to use for a resist. I never used them that way. I just was using them to get my shape down. But as we've been, as I've been doing this, I find I don't really need that shape because I can just work out the angles as I go. I think I have those actually somewhere. Now I'm not gonna. That, I could, that's, I'm you looking at you on the camera. It looks great. I'm not even. Gonna, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So then, yeah, you flip the whole shebang over, and then you bring that point that's away from you across to the seam in front of you, and then that's how we start stacking up our triangles. So just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Correct. All right. And, well, okay. And as I do it, I um I don't flip my piece anymore. I will just push that triangle underneath then bring it back over the top, then push it underneath and come back. But I figured this explanation this way is a little bit easier to maneuver. Oh, I see you just did it. Oh yeah. And yeah, and then you can use your end and fold back and forth. Let's see, let's see. But I, yeah, I suppose though, flipping it back and forth it makes it a lot more because now I'm like, I'm losing myself again. I, I mean, you know what I mean? Like I'm now like, oh, okay, wait a minute. Now, which way am I going? But um, I, I think I found it again. Okay. I think. And um, one of the things that can happen, Ooh. so this is sticking together nicely because it's damp. But um, when you're working with like one of those rayon bamboo scarves that are super slippery and I generally don't sew to ash soak those first. I will do them dry with an iron, but I will use, let me grab them and show you these little quilters, uh, quilters clips. Um, and I will clip along the edges, those long folded edges. 
Right. To, to for, hold it together to keep them yeah. from slipping apart. Yeah, because rayon is so lightweight, thin. You know, the fabric is, the material is thin. And so, yeah, uh, clips, that's a good idea. So now where did you get those from? Those are cute. Amazon. <laughs> well, you'll have to you'll have to send me the link like uh, afterwards if you can message me the link and then I can link them down in the description box of this video. So because I know people are going to want to get um, the supplies that you're using. So I'll make it easy. Now I've got these tassels and I've got this little bit of fabric. It's not in a triangle. Do I, I just flip that over too? Yes. I, I just flip it on and then I take those flappy little tassels and I put them onto the bottom. And then when I rubber band, I rubber band three directions. I go from the point to the center of the straight side and I just go across in three directions that way and they all cross in the middle and that just kind of holds those tassels. And the tassels I put on the bottom of the stack when I'm uh, doing the dyeing. So let me grab. So, so neat and tidy, but you know, hey, you guys, it's my first one and I won't know my personal adjustments that I need to make until I process this one, open it and go, okay, I get it. And this is what I would do the same, do dip, whatever, you know, you got to do it a few times to, to really get it. Okay. So, uh, I have my steps, favorite rubber bands. Yours is so tidy. My tassels are, feel like they're all over the place. Okay. Well, remember, I've done this so many times. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, okay. Oh, you're using my favorite rubber bands in the color purple. All right, I can do that too. All right. I love these rubber bands, especially for spirals, you guys. And all of the, the, my regular supplies are listed in the description box down below um, as usual. And then I will update with, you know, stuff that we talk about with Margo today. Um, but these are the best, these are the best rubber bands. Okay, so I'm seeing you. So you went from Okay, so flip it over so the tassels are on the bottom, okay? And then you just are going over the center point. Well, let me just see if I can do that too. So yeah, I come in on the center point of the, the long side and then I just bring that rubber band over to the point. Okay. So you have a long side and a... Okay, no, uh, mine looks kind of like yours. Uh, yours looks better than mine, but that's okay. Um, I don't, I don't feel like I have a long side and a short side. I kind of feel like all my sides are similar, right? And yeah. By, by long side, I'm just mean like the straight side oh, oh, from the, from the center of the straight side over to the point. Got it. There's a point and a, yeah, a, a straight, long, flat side and then a point. Gotcha. I'm, I'm speaking your language. Okay. <laughs> and, and then we'll do it again this way. Well, that actually... That's a, that's pretty easy with the rubber bands. I'm like, when I make my kaleidoscopes, it's like, I don't know where to stick the rubber band. You know, things want to slide all over the place. And this is pretty straightforward. Okay. All right. Hey, that was pretty good. And now my tassels, a lot of them are just flopping about, but that's not really going to matter. I don't think they're just going to do yeah, it. I, I kind of tuck them in underneath a little bit, but once we put it inside of our ice barriers that we're going to make, um, then we can tuck them in. Okay. All right. So that's, that's one. Right. So why don't we go ahead and fold the second hand towel and, okay. um, and get that pair set. I like that idea. Okay. So far, so good. Um, so, yeah, so like Margo said, we're making a, a matching set. And I can tell you, and I, Margo, I'm, I'm curious about for you as well. I have a really hard time reproducing my work. So, for instance, I can make spirals all day long, use the same colors and all of that. But from day to day, it they don't turn out the same. I might have a heavier hand with the dye one day, or, you know, it might be warmer on one day, or maybe I used more ice on one day the variables. 
So mm -hmm. making a set at the same time, if you want them to match, I think is a really good idea. Do you I find made, that? Uh, oh yeah, I made Scott and Kelly. Um, I traded with Scott a pair of Turkish towels for um, a t-shirt and then they used them for window coverings and made a comment about what to use on the other window. And I, so Kelly and I traded a hoodie for a pair of towels. And even though I used the exact same dyes and thought I had the same procedure, they just, you know, the way the dye broke through the layers and everything just wasn't quite the same. Yeah. They're coordinating, but not matching. Good. Okay. So I'm not alone in this. How about you guys out there? Have you noticed that if you try to reproduce your work that it, I mean, it might be similar, but it's, you know, it's, it's just not the same. So, okay, good. I, I, I'm not alone then. It's not, it's not just me. Okay. So I did my first fold in half and then I'm going to fold from the bottom to the top. Talking myself through it here. And making sure as I go, like if I have any big wrinkles, like I did right there, smoothing those wrinkles out as I go. Or you're not, it's not necessarily a wrinkle, but it's like the fabric bunches up in the, the center part of the, like where I fold it up. Get those out of there best you can. Well, this one doesn't want to, I'm going to use my yardstick and see if I can, it'll help me make a nice straight edge on this one. Because this one doesn't, wants to gather up on me. Okay. So I'm curious who, who out there is um, tying up with us? Has anybody got their towels out and uh, doing your project? Let's see. I try to read along and kind of look out of the corner of my eye to see what you guys are saying, but it's hard when I'm trying to concentrate to keep up. Okay. All right, that using the yardstick right in there really helped make that edge a lot nicer. Okay, now, okay, oh, that's right. Now the accordion fold. I don't know what the, this towel wants to bunch up a lot more than the last one did. I don't know what, what it's, what its problem is, but it's, it's giving me the business, you guys. I think it's because they're hand woven, they're hand loomed. And so, yeah, there's probably a little bit of just inconsistency and tension. Makes total sense. But yeah, having that straight edge of the yardstick uh, really just made it real nice and easy. Nice. Okay, let's see if I can do this one without all that. Okay. Yep. Yeah. A little bit of a, a little bit of an edge in there. Golly gee, yeah. Nope. I mean, I, I know I'm complaining. I'm not complaining. I'm just like baffled why this one's doing it so much more than the other. But like, like we just said, they're not necessarily totally factory. They're not made from Wally World. Okay. All right, now I've got my quarters and then pick a side, any side, right? That's what we said. Yeah, you, you want to start from the the top, this the center of the, the towel, not the fringe. End. But it doesn't matter if it's the outside or the inside edge. Okay, this time, so last time I had, so remember you guys, last time I had, um, I had the edge that had the like five, five edges and then I had the one with the two and I started with the the five edges this time I'm going to switch it and I'm going to just see if folding it with the two folds makes it easier to start this first uh, triangle out I'm just curious and then we're going to do that half half triangle to start and then flip it over and then make the first full triangle. Okay. Okay. I think so far so good here. And then, then we flipped it over. Let's see. And then just, it's like just folding a flag. Let's see. And then on my, on my half of the screen, I'm doing 
what I normally do where I flip under back and forth just okay. to, for people to see what that looks like. Yep, I like it. Okay, and then flip it over. Yeah, I'm excited to learn this because I've got a whole bunch of rayon stuff, like, um, you know, swimsuit wraps, uh, dresses, shawls, um, um, like infinity scarves. I mean, I've got, I have just about everything Dharma has to offer, or at least a couple of each, just about. And I love to dye fabric so much more than making t-shirts. So having this in my wheelhouse is going to make, you know, so many more interesting, beautiful. I have a shower curtain I've had for two years and I just don't know what to do with it. And it's, it wasn't cheap. So I'm scared to dye it because I don't want to wreck it. Um, I want to do that tessellation fold, but I'm not very good at those yet. So I think maybe doing this uh, shibori style on it, I think will be the way to go. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Looks good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Yours does too. Thanks. You're the guru. All right, now getting the rubber bands on them here. Let's see. So that sun is starting to come in and I begin to roast. You guys know from the last video, I was sweating up a storm. Well, how warm is it out there right now? You know, I have no idea what the temperature is, but I, it feels like it's got to be in the 50s. How, how about your temperature? We actually got up to the 50s also, which is warm for this time of year. Because uh, for those people that aren't familiar, and I'm not really super familiar, you're, you're on the East Coast, right? I'm in Massachusetts. And uh, one week ago today, we got 17 inches of snow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> like is that normal for this time of year that late in in the year to have that much snow it's it's not that unusual it was a it was a, our biggest snowfall of the year but it was not not that unusual okay because we had some i don't know maybe it's been three weeks now or something and we had like three feet of snow which again is not unusual for us but it was record breaking. Uh, it, it's, you know, February, yeah, we can get snow, but you know, not anything like that. And we don't get a lot of snow. We get it up in the mountains, but we don't get it down in the valley. So to have that much this late was very unusual. So what a drastic change though, last week to have that much snow and then having a beautiful spring afternoon. But I'll take it. I love the sunshine. All right. I feel I feel decent about those. One's a smidge bigger than the other. A smidge, but they're pretty good. They look good. I'm I'm all right with it. And I think for me, starting with the two folds instead of the five folds made it start easier for me. So if for those of you out there, um Try that next time and see. I can see where that would work better because as you come across, the layers would tend to splay apart less. Yeah. Right. Um, it's all, all more more contained for me, at least that time. And my tassels are all over the place. That's So the tassel part, like, welcome to my brain. It's, that's just, uh, things are neat and tidy. And then, oh, you got tassels everywhere. Okay. So now... Is this where we start to build the ice barrier with the um, cutting boards from Dollar Store? Well, do we want to do that or do we want to oh. fold the larger towels while we're in folding mode? Oh, sure. And, Let's, we can and then build the ice, berry, ice barriers for both at the same time. Yeah, good idea. I'm following your lead. So... Okay. Let's... Okay. So we're in fold mode. So I'm going to set these off to the side here. 
Actually, I'm going to set them over off to the side so I can. Now, this towel, do you know the dimensions on it by chance right off the top of your head? It's big. Yeah, it's like 40 by 70, something like that. Yeah, something like that. And, they're, and I think I think they vary a little bit from towel to towel because they're uh, hand woven. Sure, for sure. Um, they're really nice. Like uh, they remind me a lot of hospital blankets. Um, just like durable, um, real nice, and so affordable, you guys. Um, so. Uh, for those of you, and I don't know, I haven't reached out to the Turkish dowry. It's on Etsy. And if you find, I made a video specifically for, now, before I go on my, my uh, little rant here, um, or my tangent, same fold in half, fold in half again. Yes. So we're, we're quartering it, but, and then we're going to accordion fold it, but we're going to accordion it extra. More than the, the other one because we can with this one. It's it's got a little bit more playroom. I it works right. better. <laughs> okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so I made a unboxing tutorial dedicated to the Turkish dowry on Etsy where these came from. Um, and so if you're not familiar with this product, uh, go watch that tutorial when we're done here and all of the information and how you get connected to order these is in that tutorial. And, uh, the Turkish dowry gave me a coupon code. So it's all capital letters, Belladonna, Belladonna. Um, now I know that they do a lot of really great sales. So I think Kelly said it it was basically useless because there was already like a sale going on. I don't know. I, because I've made a purchase with them, I can't see because they're gracious and they gave me a 40, 40% uh, coupon, which I'm, they give to everybody. So if you make a purchase, you'll get a 40% coupon or some, you know, something to that effect. Um, so I can't tell if the coupon code works, but try. So like if there's no sale going on, I recommend trying to use all capital letters, Belladonna and get yourself something, a little bit of savings anyways. That was really super nice of them. I don't benefit in any way, you guys, like I'm not getting free stuff or anything like that. I just worked it out with them, with her, um, you know, for you guys. Um, she, you know, she appreciates the tutorial that I made for her. So she's just gracious enough to give you guys a coupon. So I just don't want you guys to think like, oh, you know, use the Belladonna because, you know, stuff's going to get a bunch of free stuff. It's, it's, that's not at all what's going on. I just try to make things really easy for you guys. Okay. So I've got it in half. I got all my folds up at the top. Okay. Now, Okay, now what, how do I start that accordion fold? Is there any special trick? So what I, what I've been doing is um, I take, so um, I'll, oops. so I'll figure out what that next quarter line is. So I come up and I, Fold it there. Okay, so you've got the opening. Okay, I'm going to flip mine over. So I've got my, the one side is just folded in half. You can't really work with it. And then the open edges are, I've got them down at the bottom of my table. And yep. then you, you fold halfway up. Is that what you did? Yes. Yeah, so I, I folded this up to that top folded edge here. Oh, okay. All the way up. Okay. So go all the way up to, got it. Okay. All right. And then you're going to take that top layer, that top um, section and come back to that fold that you just made. Okay. And that's going to be the width of the stack that we make. Okay. So I went up. 
from the very bottom up to the top, okay? And now I've got that uh, top edge there, and right here is the, the back side. It's flat against the table. I've got it folded in half, and then I'm gonna bring that top portion, I think I'm doing this right, back to that center line. Yes. Okay. That's easy. That's great. Like I don't have to like get out the measure, like the yardstick, <laughs> and do any math or any measuring or I just, yeah, I like that. And then, um, and then I just pick up where that fold is at and pinch it and let that, that front section of fold fall down to that center line. And there we go. Oh boy, now I'm not sure. I might have missed a step there. Let's see. Oh, I see. And then, okay, I got it. All right, so now, now pick that up right where they're meeting, I, I think. Pick it up. Mm, and okay, let me see. Okay, yeah, all right. And then yep. so what I've got is I've got, I've got yeah. some accordion folds at the top, and now we've got the other half of the whole towel wide open to start some accordions. So what I do is I take that stack of accordions up at the top and I pick it up by that and bring it down towards me, flip the whole thing over, and then we can start picking up folds and stacking them on top of that stack of accordion folds. Okay, I'm going to watch you do it. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna pick it all up. Get it flopped down in front of me. Try to probably be nicer about it than I just did. Okay. Okay, now I've got those pleats on the bottom and then I got the rest of it now. And then just to, like, just back and forth, back and forth. Back and forth, back and forth. Okay, I'm just going to watch and make sure. So it looked like you, you pulled it and brought it towards you. I, I did. Okay, all right. So. And you, you're good. You've done it enough now to where you can just like eyeball it like you have a good sense of how much how far up you need to pinch to pull back towards you yes but i also you know then i'll go inside and see where i'm at and adjust from there exactly you want to make sure that your line isn't too far off so you want to you know bring that fabric and so your your edge now you want everything to line up flush along this edge yes okay it kind of just right at this moment, it's kind of like the, the glitch. Margo, have you done a glitch yet? Oh, I did a glitch. It was not good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it, it took me uh, three times a charm. So Scott, Scott Walker, Rad Dies, uh, we did the first one and then we did a redemption live. And then I did one like a solo tutorial on it. And that one turned out pretty good. But it, you know, third time's a charm. It it took a little took a little getting used to. But um, I think they're kind of fun. But it, it, just the way that you were, were you know just kind of pleating real you know just real basic. It it seems like so easy, but until you do it a couple of times, it's like oh wait a minute like what? Um. But I feel I feel pretty good about this. I I think that these are pretty friendly. Like once you see how simple it is, it's like the principle of it's pretty simple. It's just a matter of practice. Yeah. But I think they're pretty friendly. So far, so far, I was, you know, I was a little nervous. I'm like, oh, I tried one of these on a t-shirt well, well over a year ago, it seems. And it was good, but I had no idea how to dye it or what. So I just did a dye over ice buck dye with uh, SF Fog, the special order dyes from Dharma. And I, I love the shirt and I love the color. Uh, you know, it could have been better, but 
I didn't really know what the heck I was doing. I was just messing around. Watched a ton of YouTube videos. You, you weren't around. I mean, like you hadn't, you hadn't hit the scene yet. So I didn't have any, any reference to go off of from you. Um, when I made my shirt. So it was a lot of, um, like overseas type videos where there's like no English explanation. So I had to just really try to watch and, you know, try to figure out what the heck, because all the, the, you know, the language wasn't anything I could understand. So, okay. I, I'm not really, that last one right there, see, I don't know if you guys can see that, but the fabric is really gathering on me again. So I'm going to take out my yardstick and just see if I can get, get that edge to help or to lay flat. Cause I think if you have a bunch and I don't know, I could be wrong, but a, the same principle with t-shirts, if you got a bunch of like when you're centering your shirt, if you got a bunch of fabric bunched up in there, your, your dye is not going to flow good. That sounded really intelligent, but you know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Now you've got your clips out. I don't so know. I, went ahead, I went ahead and clipped the edges for while we're folding just to show how to do that. Okay. Um, and I'm using these. They're like electrical clips. These are bigger than those quilters clips because this is going to be too thick, too many layers for those little ones. All right. I've got it. I'm, I have, I've got large binder clips and I wonder if those will work. If they're not big enough, I have other. Those should work. I think those will work fine. You could also use like, you know, little clothespins. Oh yeah, clothespins. Um, I just, where are my clips? Oh, there they are. Okay. I have these uh, spring-loaded clamps, but they might be a little aggressive for what we're doing here. Let me see. Okay, the small ones will work. So I, for right now, I've got, I do have a link down below for these spring-loaded clamps. They come in really handy for all kinds of stuff. Like, these are super industrial, you guys, for like massive clamping. I rarely use them for tie-dye. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna, let's see, I'm looking at yours. Okay, kind of stagger them back and forth a little bit. Yeah, these little ones are great for tie-dyeing. And they're super cheap. Like I think this whole this whole bag was $14.99. Okay. I got some of those too. I actually end up using them on um, where I do all my photographs if I want to hold back the curtain and things like that. I use them for all sorts of stuff. Yeah, they're they're super affordable and they're strong. Like they're really sturdy and they're plastic. So they you can wash them off and they don't get all rusty and funky and Okay, so my my end of mine is off the table, but it looks it looks just like Margot's, uh, not as great, but same same deal, same dealio here. Okay. Oh, thank you, Wanda. Wanda gave us a tip. Thank you very much. I greatly greatly appreciate that. I think you're wonderful. So the 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 proceeds they go back into the channel, so we can you know keep bringing some content out here, keep things, keep the lights on around here. Okay. Now when it comes to the fold, is it, do we do the same half triangle? Yes. Okay. Now this one is different. So I've got multiple folds on each side. So I've got like one, let's see, one, two, three, four on this side. And I've got, I've got four on both sides. So I don't think it's going to matter at all which side I start from, but I'm starting at the side with no tassels. Okay. So, oh, this one's thick. Yeah, that, that's part of the reason I like having those clips along the length because it helps keep it from moving around too much. Yeah. I can totally see that. I'm almost wondering if I try again, like I did on the last one, I've got the, the thinner ends of the, um, towel, um, on one side and just the, the non, I don't know what I'm, 
what they're called, the, the open ends and the non-open ends. I'm going to flip it around and see if it helps again on this one. Okay, so I think I'm off camera. I'm going to try to move it here, see if you guys can see. Okay. I think, you know, like getting it started is probably the hardest part. And then once it starts to go, it, it's really, once you get the rhythm. Yeah, it, once you get the shape down, it really helps. Okay, let's see if I can see if that works. Ooh, I don't know. Okay, now I'm going to pick it up. Ooh. Nope, that's not working. Let me see here. Let me look again. And then take that point to the far side. So not to the same side. So your point that you're taking across always goes to the opposite side. I think when I do my first one, actually, I think I don't think I've got this. I think I got it all wrinkled up too much here. Let me pull this down. I think I got too much fabric at the end and not enough at the tassels. I don't think it's lining up down there very well. Let's try this again. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. All right. Okay, now, for me, it's that first little triangle. It's like, because it, it's a half triangle, but I, visually, I have a, I'm having a hard time seeing it. Like, gosh darn it. You're right. Having one of those triangles would have helped. So, no, this way. Triangle. Take it... Okay, let's see. Let's see if I can do it that way. Okay, now I did the half triangle. Do I have to flip the whole thing over? I'm losing it here. Uh, oh, no. Uh, so you're, I want to point at the screen. So I know. <laughs> I, I'm going to take this back here so you can see me from the beginning again. And then um, here I'll do the direction you're doing. So you take that half triangle from, so one center point is one point of that half triangle. So, let's see. Did you see what I'm doing there? Okay, I'm looking. Oh, so so that yeah. point here, that that tr half triangle has to come up to the point. Okay. Oh, it's so thick. <laughs> it is. Okay. All right, all right. I think I think maybe I got it that time. So got to get that point down in the very. Yeah. Like, yes. I'm doing that tapestry, you got to get that point involved in it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think. Okay. And then now this next way you go. Did you flip it all the way over? Or did you flip it under? So I I flipped it under, but if that's going to make it confusing, we can just flip the whole thing over. No, I, I, I think I'm, I'm just being Steph and I'm complicating things for my own well, self. So what okay. you need to keep in mind is so then this is, this is the point that goes to the opposite side. So it's going to go under to the opposite side like that. And so this is what it looks like on that back side. Okay, so I'm taking it this way. All right. Okay. There we go. Got it. That's just the yes. thing. Getting it, getting it started. And now that I've got it started, my, I, it'll start to fall in suit. Okay. Right. So then you come. You take that furthest point there across to the opposite edge. Okay, let's see. Yep. Just like folding the flag. Okay. With a lot of material. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this ends up being a pretty tall step. Okay. I know when I was looking, like when I was talking about the t-shirt that I made, there's also, and I couldn't tell you now who who made it, but like a, a vlog or a blog or whatever they're called, where um, she did, I don't know, was she making a baby blanket or something like that? But her stack, it seemed like it was three feet tall. 
<laughs> and you know, little like, and she she ironed them in between. And some of you may have seen it. And then, then it was you know so tall that she ended up stitching the outer edge of of it to keep it together. Because I mean, it was like you know. You know, you guys, Scooby-Doo and Shaggy and Scooby make their delicious looking sandwiches. That's what her shibori blanket looked like. It was that tall. Oh, like a Dagwood. Uh, is, that a, is that a sandwich? So, uh, yeah, that was a cartoon in a uh, newspaper when I was growing up. And, oh, he made, yeah. and my dad always wanted a Dagwood sandwich. And so mom would pull everything out of the fridge and there'd be like, you know, scallions and just you know like like with the whole green end sticking out of him and everything and he loved it yes <laughs> child i would watch the scooby-doo and i would crave like i when i'm when i'm big enough to make myself my own sandwich i'm gonna make myself one of those uh yeah just like salami hanging out and just you know lettuce and cheese and everything and then I grew up and realized why they like such large sandwiches. <laughs> okay. All right. So you guys, seriously, once you get going, I mean, getting it going and then you, when you get it, it's just back and forth, back and forth. Now I say that now, now we'll have to see like after it's died, if it's um, a success or not, but not at all as terrifying as I had been building this up in my mind to be. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, that looks like tremendously complicated. But we shall see. Yeah. And if you have big hands, boy, it would be like, or another set of hands or something, it would sure be nice. Okay. Yes. Because now it's getting the rubber band. Yeah. Okay. And I'm still doing just the three rubber bands. And that's the great thing with these is they're so nice and stretchy. Oh, they're, they're the best rubber bands. Uh, I mean, you guys know you're in the groups and everybody's always on the debate of rubber bands and rubber bands, rubber bands. And I just feel like I want to just say to everybody, like, just save yourself. Just get, get these rubber bands. Just get them. They're like the great rubber bands. They're perfect. I, I, have a, I had a friend come over for the day um, to learn about tie dye, and and I was like, "These are great rubber bands." And he was like, "Oh, what's the difference?" And I was like, "Okay, here, play this rubber band, stretch it." And then I handed him one of these, and he, and he was like, Ooh. <laughs> "I remember that post. Yeah, I saw that post because it's true. It's like because they're not. I don't know what are they silicone or I. I mean they're." I don't know what they are, but they're, there's something different about them. They're, they're soft, they're stretchy. Uh, they rinse off really well, so they don't stain. The only downfall to these is they don't like heat. So, oops, I forgot to put my tassels on the bottom. If you apply heat, they do have a tendency to snap, but you know, for regular projects, they're, they're fine. So that uh, explains why I had some snap after I put them in my, I have a food dehydrator. I use to heat things. Yep. They, they don't like the heat. I mean, a lot of rubber bands don't like the heat. It's not, not just these rubber bands, but they will, they'll pop. And also once you apply heat, they don't go back to their original size. Uh, if you just do regular projects, you know, ice dyes and normal stuff, they'll, they just rinse off and go back to normal but i keep my stretched out rubber bands for large projects like hoodies and i don't i try really hard not to waste anything and reuse as much as possible um i see some people cut their rubber bands i did murder to my rubber bands last live because i was just, i just needed them off the project and i was so stressed out but i really try to reuse as much as possible because this stuff adds up everything is real expensive you know, and if you're just chopping your rubber bands just to chop them, well, you got to keep buying them. and Or you have to keep buying them because you're lazy and don't put your rubber bands away. Like, I still, you guys haven't put these rubber bands away yet. It's like, I I don't like to do it. It's so, it's like a terrible chore. 
All right. If I don't if I don't put mine away, my cat steals them and eats them. Uh oh. Yeah, you don't want that. You don't want rubber no. bands in, in the belly. Uh uh. No no. Choking hazard. Okay. Yes. So on the last one there, I kind of lost it. So I'm gonna. And, and the rubber bands, I want to tangle in my tassels. Um. Let's see if I can wedge it up under there. Okay. All right. So, all right, we're doing another one. Matching yes. set? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's get this one off to the side. Okay, that one was a definite learning curve, you guys. Same exact principle, but just, you know, lots more fabric for my hands to hold. I don't think I got my rubber bands on there quite like they're supposed to be. Let's see. Um, nope. Not at all on there like they're supposed to be. Let's see. Did you do the same crisscross? Oh, you sure did. I, I did. Mine seems so much fatter and bigger than yours. Let's see. Let me squish it. That's uh, it. Oh, and they're not going like they don't want to be on the points. Okay, that are they're okay. I see it. There's my point on that side going down the long side. That's what's going on here. Okay. And then, okay. And there's my point on the other side. So find the point. Oh boy. Yeah. These rubber bands are perfect for this project. They're fitting perfectly. There we go. There we go. Now my tassels aren't letting it sit very straight, but let me, if I smash it, there we go. I'm happy with that. Looks good. Uh, oh, I only brought one towel out. So, um, I don't know, Margo, can you see some of the comments and questions while I run? I'm not sure if I've even spun out my other one. Let me go check. If you could, I don't know if you can, if you can see some of the comments and to see if there's any questions or anything like that, um, just so we don't have dead air and I'll be right back. Okay, so somebody says, uh, Viper Dye is asking, I'm assuming they're going to dye the tips of the triangle. So actually what we'll be doing is we'll be stacking it like this flat and, and we'll put a barrier around it and the die goes on the flat surface and it sinks through the layers and it fragments the die into its different components. And that's how you get that shibori effect. If you saw the towel I showed at the beginning. Um, oh, here. <laughs> I tied up a visual aid, or I, I folded up a shirt. So this was a shirt that I did with Strawberry Skies. And so this was the top of the stack and this was the bottom of the stack. So it was, it, you got your pinks and reds and purples on top. And then as it sank through, it divided up into the different components till you got to the blue. And then you end up with that effect. You said that's Strawberry Skies? Yes. I love that dye. I love that color. <laughs> it's so hard for me to pick up another jar because I love it so much. <laughs> yeah, it, it's magic. It's uh, it's magic in a jar. And so for those of you that maybe don't know what Strawberry Skies, Skies is, it's from happycattiedye.com, Amanda Angel. You can uh, order some Strawberry Skies from her. She's got, she's an... Um, a tie dyer and an ice dyer. So she designs her dyes uh, specifically to split for ice dyeing and they're fabulous. So yeah. And that's another thing. So uh, thinking about what colors to use, I, I'm not, I'm not sure um, what I was going to do. I've been thinking about it all last night and all today, picking, picking a color that's going to split. I was thinking Pro Kim's Stormy Sky because it's so beautiful, but it's kind of dark. Um, and then I also have Pro Kim's Spicy Plum, which is that beautiful magenta with green splits. And I love that color. Well, you could always use both side by side on top because that's what I did with the Ashes to Ashes and the Black Magic is. I covered part of the top with one color and part of the top with another color. I did a pair of towels for Amanda from Happy Cat. Um, 
half dragon egg, which splits from orange down to green, and the other half the strawberry skies that went from the pink down to the blue. That sounds fun. It was. <laughs> I mean that it's that I mean that sounds like a wild color combination with the pinks and the blues and the oranges and the greens and I lo I love playing with fun and funky color combinations. Okay, I'm trying to get all the wrinkles out. I'm I'm so happy I had enough foresight to spin out too. So that was good on my part. Okay, let's see here. Let me just get it started and all lined up. I need a bigger table. Okay. <laughs> Lila says, uh, Amanda, she may be a witch. <laughs> <laughs> Making all the, those fabulous colors. Yeah. yeah. She, got, she definitely has some magic in her dyes for sure. And she yeah, named but, them some really fun, like outrageous names, like really um, fantastical, like Dragon's Egg. The first thing I think about is Game of Thrones, Mother of Dragons. I don't know if any of you have ever seen Game of Thrones, but that's what it reminds me of. I have yeah, I, pulled, I pulled out Black Magic and Cosmic Energy to maybe use on this one. Yeah, I Those have. Um, I haven't had the chance to swatch out uh, anything other than Strawberry Skies yet, but stay tuned, you guys, because you will be seeing some of her her dyes upcoming. I'm going to start a playlist for her dyes like I have done for the other companies. Okay. I'm having a hard time getting mine to square up on this one. It's kind of it's kind of getting dried out, but I think it'll be fine. Okay, doesn't have to be perfect. I'm trying to make it perfect though. So one of the things, um, so I I used to do a lot of sewing, and um, sometimes it helps if you just pinch all of those four of those edges together, and then you can just run your fingers down towards the center to work it out like that. Okay. Yeah, that's a that is a good tip. Let's see here. Okay. All right. Now I think I flipped it last time, so I had the all the kind of what I'm calling open or loose edges towards me. I think that's how I did it last time. Yeah, I had those down towards me, and then okay. Now, all right. I'm gonna see if I can remember how to do this. Okay. So, okay. We go from, well, let's see, the bottom, the bottom up to the top, I think. Yeah. Pat, like all the way up to the top there. Get everything lined up. Best you can. Okay. All right. That one, that one's been feeling pretty good. I don't. Maybe right there, a little bit of the wrinkled fabric, but not so bad. Okay. Okay. Now that I did that, okay. Bottom to the top and then, wait, no, halfway. Do I, now I, I see I forgot already. So I went from the bottom up to the top and then fold it back. To yeah, that top edge to that, to that fold that you just made. Okay, yeah, to the okay, into the center. All right, that's right. Okay. And then take take it all back up to the now I now I'm forgetting again. Okay. So then you come underneath that fold that you just made and you grab those top couple layers and you pull it up and lay it down towards the top and then you make that accordion fold stack up at the top. All right, I'm watching you. Let's see. Oh, that's right. Okay, so pick it all up. Pick it all up. Make that accordion fold and bring it all the way to the top of the table or to the top of the stack. And then 
in the center, you can see where your um, like the, the the other half, the center point is there, and you got the other half to start to work with. And I got a nice wrinkle right in there. I'm gonna pick the whole thing up and bring that stack down to the bottom of the table. Did we flip it? I'm trying to. Okay, I'm watching. Yep. Oh, that's right. Pick the whole thing up and flip it over. Okay. And then, all oh, right, that's right. And then this is where I was saying, like, oh, it's kind of like the glitch where you're pulling it to the next pleat. Kind of. Yes. Okay. And then. And then come out a little ways, pick it up, and pull it towards my bottom of my table and have it line up. That one pleat is a little too wide. I need to back it off a little bit. The edge, it was overlapping like, I don't know, maybe like a centimeter too much. So I just, all I did was back it off a little and I'm making that edge line up nice and flush flush as i can okay and then yeah the sun sunshine's starting to come in which makes it a little difficult to see unfortunately on on the edge here okay so um i am thinking so you guys remember i made a poll asking what which is best um every every tuesday for lives or every other Saturday earlier, like at noon. And the majority said Saturdays at noons, every other Saturday would be better. The good thing about that is the the light will be better. We won't have as much sunlight coming in um, like we do in the afternoons. So moving forward and when I know 100% for sure, I will, you know, make a, a post saying when the next live is, but I'm thinking Saturdays through the summer is how we're going to go about this. So I hope that will help out, you know, make, make it easier for more people to be able to attend on a Saturday afternoon instead of a Tuesday evening or afternoon. But like I said, I will... I will make a notification. Now, this this one is coming up kind of awfully short. Does that happen to you sometimes, Margo? Or one, like at the very last, it's not lining up so great? Or Yeah, and then I look down through my stack and kind of, you know, work out some of the excess out of some of the other folds okay. coming up. Yep. Okay. I see. So I'm picking up what you're putting down. Okay, yeah. Right out of the gate, I way over did it on that one so let me back that off just a little bit fine tune it like you had mentioned okay have you done um any other patterns on these beach towels like um rebecca was showing me her um star flower have you ever done something like a star flower on yours? Oh, uh, the only other thing I did was a geode. Yeah, I could see a geode working out and looking real nice. Yeah, I did it in the muck just to really get some good saturation. Yeah, that that would be pretty. I got one of their um, like their bed bed blankets. It's huge. And it's soft. And so I'm looking at that thinking like, oh, I don't know how, how, what am I going to do with this? So I was thinking a geode on that would, might be a good choice. Because I originally got it because I thought it would make a cool tapestry. But then when it got here and the material is just so light, well, it's not lightweight, but it's, I don't know how to, how to explain it. It's not like sturdy, like tapestry material. I was thinking like, well, I don't know how it'll hold a, a pattern. Oh boy. I hope I don't have to like totally start over on this one. I somehow I've way overshot 
and I'm trying to back pedal here and it's not working out as great as I wanted it to. Let's see. Hmm. So, so the other way you can do it um, is you can, you know, fold it in half widthwise and then you just accordion fold each side separately without doing this kind of funky maneuver I do where I flip it back. Yeah. And you can't measure and mark. I I really want to avoid that. Okay. <laughs> Bear with me one second. It's 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 a little just too off for my for my liking. I the other one turned out halfway decent. If I if I just try to skirt through it on this one, I'm afraid that they won't, you know, they'll not they're not gonna look similar enough. All right. Okay, so I'm back off. Got Got all my folds on the bottom. I don't know how that happened. Let me stick my, move this over a little bit. Let's try this again. I'm gonna use my yardstick in there this time to create a, a, a stronger um, edge in there. I don't think that having the wrinkled fabric is making that much of a difference, but I don't know, maybe, maybe it is a little bit. Okay. Okay, dokie. Do you do any other types of um, crafts other than like dyeing fabric? Are you? Do you do painting or? Well, I've been doing some uh, stenciling on my my tie dyes that were less than successful. Yeah, so. those are amazing. Thank you. Gorgeous. And then I was, I was playing with that uh, jacquard decolorant to take the color out, and I like how those came out. Yeah, that one that I asked you about, like I was like, wow, it really it like took the purple down like that because I have I have some of the spray where you use the iron on it, and I didn't think it would take you know that like purple out, and boy oh boy, it sure did. Beautiful, I love that. Um, it was a hoodie, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, I think that was the hoodie that went to Amanda Angel. Yeah, that it was so beautiful. Okay, so all right, here we go again. So I'm going to go up to the top. I'm going to really pay attention, make sure that my lines are better than I did last time. Because when I talk, I don't think I, I don't think I think as well when I'm talking. Because usually when I'm dying, I'm dying. I'm all by myself, so I'm not talking, you know. My brain is in full function on just what I'm doing and not the words that are trying to come out of my mouth. Oh, someone is just asking um, that their theirs are dry, and is that going to be okay? So you can tie them up dry, but then you want to dye them damp. Um, I'm going to go grab a towel that I did. Um, I had let them dry out and I dyed them dry. They were sod ash soaked and then dried. And uh, the saturation came out. It, you didn't get the great fragmentation. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'd be curious to see that. I personally, you guys, I dye barely damp from a panda spin dryer. Uh, a panda spin dryer is a, a, a real game changer you know, for lots of reasons. I mean, it makes your stuff fairly damp, but you're also not wasting soda ash. It goes right back into the soda ash bucket. And if you're going to get serious about tie dyeing, you know, with the amount of money we spend on ice and dyes and fabrics, you might as well break down and try to get yourself one because it will pay for itself. I swear. So this one here, I am in front. Oh, yeah. I, I dyed this. This was wet. This had dried out, and look what the saturation did. It like it like it sucked up the dye so much on the top that you didn't get the great fragmentation, and then it didn't even let any dye come down to the bottom. Okay, so the one, the bigger one on the bottom was damp, and then the one on the top was the dry one. No, no, uh, no. I got it backwards. Okay, right. So the, this one here that um, I showed as the example when I when the camera first came on, this was wet. This was damp. And this one 
here that is kind of muddy and not, it's kind of black. That's the one that was dry. Yeah, I, I prefer the one on top, definitely. So the damp is the way to go, for sure. Um, you know, I mean, they're, they're both nice and they're, they both have their purpose, but I, I like, I like the damp better because it has more color splits. Yes. And that's, you know, that's what we're going for. We want those color splits. Okay. Now, wait a minute. Okay. That's right. Now we pick the whole thing up. I feel like I've done missed a step again. It's really not that difficult. I'm I'm getting nervous because it, I'm not getting it. No, that can't be right. Uh, I want to cry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, wait a minute now. All right. So I've got it in half. It I'm I'm overthinking it. It's not that difficult. I want it to be perfect. Okay. This time we're just going to do it and I'm, I'm not going for perfect. So I'm going to bring it up to the top and I'm going to fold it back to the middle point. Okay. Now I've got that. Now do I fold it up again? Is that what I'm doing? Cause that seems. No, that so that's what you right. So you pick it up on that, that fold. You just, nope, not like that. Come, come back, pick it up at that fold and the, the layer below that fold and bring it up above the whole okay. thing. So it straightens out that center seam. So that uh, bottom edge there comes up to the center seam. Okay, I think like that. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right. Yes. Now we're now, okay, there we go. Now I've got the center seam, which is here, and I'm going to bring the whole thing up off the table. And I feel like when I'm doing that, I need to be not as vigorous with it. I think I get my pleats like way off, you know, like now they're, they're not laying flush on this edge, which this is just going to take practice. The next time I do it, I will get better. Okay, now, okay, here we go. Now I'm bringing it towards me and I'm lining up this bottom edge so that yes. they're nice and flush. Okay. And then accordion folding it. Golly, what in the heck is wrong with me? Okay. Try not to over complicate it for yourself, you guys. Don't do what I'm doing here. It's like right there. This this piece it's like way too big. So I need to it's like way over shooting itself. So that's I'm going to fix it right here. I mean it, that was like almost a half inch too big when I picked it up and flipped it and I don't know why. And again, like Margo said, these are handmade, so they're probably not perfectly rectangular and human, human error and like my human error being involved. Okay. All right. One more to go. Oh, now my... My back is killing me from hovering. Okay. And then we're going to go this way. Let's see. Lazon, thank you so very much for your donation to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Super generous. The money was, will go back into the channel. Okay. Well. All right. That's as good as this one's going to get. I can't. It, it almost looks exactly the same as before I tried to refold it. It's just, 
it's not it's not off by a whole heck of a lot, but it's not 100% lining up as well as I would like it to. But it's close enough. Okay, now I'm going to clamp it. And we'll start that um, flake fold. All right. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready when you are. Let's see. Okay. All right. So we're going to do that half of the triangle, keeping that point. All right. So you've got to get that point in there. Like I just learned, and it lends a little off the screen. And I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but see, like my, um, I don't know what you call it. They're not lining up perfectly, and that's probably, would you say that's why we start with a half triangle? Because that edge might not all be 100% lined up. Is there, I mean, is there a reason why we start with a half? Because you can't do a, a full triangle and do an equilateral triangle. If oh. you it just, the math doesn't work that way or the geometry doesn't work that way. Okay. I guess that makes sense. Okay. All right. And then I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember what you just taught me. Okay. So then I'm going to take this, this corner and I'm going to bring it up, up or under? Under, because okay. you just fold it over, then you're going to take that point across and under. Yes. Okay. So. So we went over, under. Yeah. Okay. And then over, over and across. We take that point across and over. And then that point again. Oh, wait a minute. Ugh. And then under it, yes. I'm gonna get that like that. Okay, and then under, making those triangles best you can. Okay, and then so that one was, uh, that one was under. So now you're gonna come over. Okay, yeah, over. Oops. Heck. And then at a certain point, you can switch to just laying it down on top of the stack. Yep, there we go. Got it that time. Triangle, triangle, triangle. Okay, that one was over. Now this one's going to go under. Okay, all right. Almost there, you guys. Almost there. Okay, and then this one's going to go over. <laughs> yeah, helping, like, talking myself through it as I'm going, that's helping. Over, under, over, under. Okay, and then back. Oh, goodness. It's so thick. Okay. Well, heck. Do you do this much on T-shirts, Margo? Uh, I do. How do you feel, do you feel for, for you, because you have the experience, do you feel it's just as easy and as comfortable on a t-shirt as it is on like a flat piece of fabric? Cause you know, all the sleeves and stuff like that. It's, it's a little bit trickier. And the, the challenge I've been finding is to not end with them, the pattern being focused on our chests. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, right. Like your your placement, right? Yeah. Like, trying to find where you're not having like the the like, the X right on like the the breast. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't make pants very often, but I always 
as embarrassing and uncomfortable as it is, you know, uh, of a discussion, but like when I make my tutorials, I have to say like, you need to pay attention to where your dye placement is with pants. You don't want to have yellow, brown, red, you know, right in the, the crotch. I mean, I have to say it, you know, you got, you have to pay attention. You know, you got to think about that. You know, you make a cute pair of shorts and then right in the center of the butt is a giant yellow piece of dye. That's not very complimentary. <laughs> so, I mean, those definitely important things to keep in mind for sure. And I, I you know, how you would know exactly where your pattern's going to fall on the breast, I could see that to be kind of challenging. It is. Okay. But like I mentioned, I've got all those really pretty uh, rayon items from Dharma that I'm excited to try this on. They might be a little more forgiving because, it, you know, like it's a poncho and stuff like that. It's not form fitting to the body. Um, I hope anyways. Okay, there we go. Wait a minute. There's no, that one goes there. Okay. Do -do -do -do. Okay, here we go. Come on, rubber bands. I got to be smarter than my rubber bands here. So put it on the point. Okay. So that one goes on the point and goes across to the flat side. This one's on the point and is on the flat side. Okay. There I'm, I'm having, I'm finding if I turn the point in front of me, that helps me see it. And I don't know if it'll help you guys. But... Your screen is frozen. Oh no. You guys, Amanda, did you remind me to plug in my phone? No. Here, I just got to plug it in and it should come back on. I hope. If it didn't, we'll have to back out and do a part two, which, gosh, I hope. Thank you for catching that. Let's see here. I'll climb up here on my step stool and see if I can click a button. And Okay, hopefully... Hopefully it should come back and just give it a second. Because on my so, end, it looks like it's moving again, but I don't yep. know. Okay. Yep, Perfect. You guys, I see I'm such a scatterbrain. I got it. I need a checklist and have it in front of me. Like check, 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 you know, plug in the phone, do this, do that. Because I always forget to plug my phone in. Okay. Well. I don't know. It's by no stretch a perfect, perfect, perfect triangle, but I'm going to take it as a win for my first time. My first one looks a lot better than my second one, but go figure. Although I'm about to lose a rubber band on this one and I don't know why, what's going on. Okay. Now what do I need to grab? Okay. So now we're going to make the ice barriers. Okay. So we, are so we need the, the flexible cutting boards. Okay. A ruler and something to cut them with. Okay. I've got that. Let's see. How many? Oops. Oh, no. I just knocked it on the floor. Thank goodness it didn't fall apart. I've, I got to get, get these like away from me. That'll be my luck. I'll knock it down and come undone and have to do it all over again. I'm not doing that. And when I'm doing a pair of towels, I like to make one barrier that goes around both of them. Okay. So are we starting with the big ones or the little ones? We're going to start with the big ones. Okay. So how many should I, how many of these boards should I get out? Did you say? We need two of them for this okay. one. Two of them. Okay. And then, um, here's my ruler. So I did measure ahead of time, um, but these stacks should be about six inches along an edge. Oh, yeah, it's, a, it's between five and six inches along an edge. Um, the, your, the okay. towel itself or the cutting board? Uh, so the 
the stack, the large stack along this edge, along each of these edges, it should be about six inches, between five and six inches. Okay, let me and so, side here. Let me. I need one of those, uh, that mat you have. I need that in my life. So this is a cutting mat that goes with my rotary cutter. And I bought them as a set at Joanne's. Yeah, I like that. I need something like that. I, I use this quite a bit. It's really handy. So I'm measuring mine and my, yeah, it's about five inches. Yeah, pro, you know, approximately. Yeah, they're all kind of about. Yeah, about five inches. Okay. Okay. So, so what I do is I take and I measure five inches or whatever my width is along here, and then I create a fold and I use a ruler, kind of shorter ruler, to create the fold. So I'll, I'll measure and mark. Mine are six inches. So I'm going to do six inches on this. Okay, so my cutting board is, if I do it the short way, it's 11 inches wide. And then if I do it the long way, it's about 14 inches. So half would be seven. And then if I did it the other way, I wonder if that would work. It's about 11. Maybe that'd be too small though. So what, what I end up doing is, so you can see the direction that I have this folded, because then this flap gives me a little overlap over the other one, because I'm going to take two of them. Okay. And so this is going to fold over the outside of this one that I fold. All right. Does so that make sense? So I'm going to do, I'm going to do it um, the long way then. Okay. So, and I'm going to fold it in half. So if my, if my stack is, let me measure it again. Okay, where should my tassels be? Yours is so neat and tidy. Okay, so my the tassels, tassels will, be, will be on the bottom of the stack. On the bottom. Okay, and then, so it has the four, like the three sides. Does it matter the orientation of where the tassels are for measuring this uh, thing we're creating? It, it really doesn't. Okay. Um, so, like, I can, I can see that I've got... Uh, Mine are six inches wide. So, um, so, yeah, I mean, to give myself room, mine are about six inches wide, too. I mean, because if I cut it, if I did it at five, I'm like, it's, that's going to be really tight. So, okay, so fold it, fold it at the six. So, fold it at six and at six again. So then there will be a two inch at the end. You want it really tight or? Or do I want to do it at like at six and a half to give a little bit of wiggle room? Or do I want to? No. Pick no. You want it tight. You want this barrier to be tight because that, that's one of the things with how I do this is I get that barrier snugged up super tight. So as the dye and the ice melts through, it can't escape out to the sides. It's forced through all the layers of fabric. Okay. Okay, that totally makes sense. So I'm going to draw a straight line here and fold this best I can. I've never folded one of these cutting boards before. Do you score it or do anything, or you just force it to fold? I just force it over the cutting or over the ruler. Oh, over the ruler. Okay. Yes, the ruler is your friend. That makes sense. And then I bend it over the ruler. And then what I end up doing is once I have it bent over is I put the ruler on top and I use that ruler to really press it flat and make that crease. Yeah, like they don't really want to bend, do they? Maybe, does it matter which direction? Maybe if I try to bend it the other, like on the other side, like there's a shiny side and kind of like a matte side. I'm not sure that, that I have found any difference for that. Okay. Well. Okay, and then what did you say? Okay, so you fold it and then you put the ruler on top and do what to it? I, and then I use that ruler to really press that crease down. Okay. Ooh, that's nails on the chalkboard right there. Let's see. Oh, 
I just I was just uh, laying my ruler down and using and just pressing on top of my ruler. <laughs> well, well, I did that first, and then got it to bend in half, and then I took it out, and then I then I did it on top to kind of really mash it down. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so now we need tape. Where's my tape? Okay, so I did that one fold, and then you said there was another fold that I need to do? Uh, yeah, so you did the, the six inch line and then another six inches past that. So then there's like a, a narrow two inch strip on the end. Yep, that, um, that, that almost just, that, yeah, it's like perfect, kind of. And then I just gonna fold that over top of itself like I'm making an envelope. Yes. Okay. And now do you reuse these? I do. That's one of the great things about making them out of the, you could do this out of cardboard, but doing this out of these, I just, you know, I use yes. them over and over and over again. Yeah. I like that. Like, like I was saying, I, I like to, I like to try to not be wasteful and reuse, reuse, reuse. Has your dollar store turned into a dollar 25 store like it has here? It's turned to a dollar 99 store. Whoa. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> Inflation. Yeah, for real. That's that's a lot. I mean, that's that's a big one. Yeah, ours is now a dollar twenty-five, and it really makes a big difference. Okay, and so we do that twice. All right. Let's see if I can if I can do that again. So I found for mine when I was trying to fold it. For just for me, um, having the shiny side up, I think that's how I did it. Let's see. Yeah, so the shiny side is on the table. It seemed like for me, I know it probably is not different, but it folded easier for me having like folding the shiny side in on itself. Cool. I, I, it just seemed different. So okay. my, so my, old batch of uh, flexible cutting boards had a matte and a shiny side, but there's these new ones that are just kind of, it's a different material and they're matte on both sides. Oh yeah. Mine, mine is uh, shiny on both. And it's, it's kind of like super stiff feeling. Like it doesn't, it really does not want to be folded, you know, like it's, it's like, this is not what it was meant for. No, what are you doing to me? Which is good if you're wanting it to be a cutting board, but if you're wanting to fold it and make an envelope, well, okay, let's see here. Yeah, it, I mean, you'd think like, oh, yeah, that's easy, just fold it, but it's kind of, it really doesn't really want me to do it to it, but once I get it going, but I mean, you can see the plastic, like, uh, changing color and like really like resisting you know like it's I'm really damaging the plastic like it's like don't do this to me yes that was packing tape I just saw a question from somebody so yeah I use the packing tape because it really holds up to me washing my my forms and reusing them and it also comes off of these really easily so I can put fresh tape on if I need to but uh it works really well Okay, packing tape. So I have some of that in my bedroom. I'll have to go get it. I also have glue masking tape, but that probably won't hold up uh, very well. It, it'll probably hold up for, for this dyeing, but like for multiple dyeing, well, no, it might come off now that I'm thinking about it with water. Yeah. Hmm. I have a brand new roll in the back of my bedroom. I just got it. I have a brand, another brand new roll, but I see what I do is I get real messy, like stuff everywhere. And then I organize myself and I organize myself to the point where I can't find anything. I don't know if any of you guys are like that, but welcome to my, my world. I put things away so good. I can't find them. Okay. All right. Now I've got two. Okay. Now, let me see here. So, okay. So you put them side by side there. And then 
Oh, the little lip. Okay, the little lip is going to catch the one, right? Oh, right. Yes. Yeah, so there's my little lip, and I, um, and I overlapped it over the wider side, one of the six-inch sections here. So then it's going to become like this, and then it will close up. But I don't close this other side because I'm going to scoop around both of these and take that shut. Like it becomes very snug in there so that it's forcing all of the melt water through the towels. All right, let me let me go grab my packing tape. I'll be right back. All right, I found it. Let's see here. All right. So you tape probably the whole, do you tape the whole length of the cutting board or just a couple of little pieces? Probably doesn't matter. What do you think? Um, I did most of the length. I ended up doing it in two pieces. Um, it's not that, not that much melt water is going to escape through that. Okay, let's see here if I can get this started. All right. Well, I hope I'm doing this right. Okay. Okay. Pull that over. All right. All right. I got that taped together. Now, where, now where do I go from here? Okay. So now you're going to stand your two. Oh, I see. It does make a triangle like you were saying. Got it. Okay. <laughs> The light bulb is coming on. Right, okay. but you've got the two boards taped together so that, how do you have? Oh, so where is she? Do you have, an, oh, you have another short flap there? Yes. So then that short flap, so it's gonna actually, it'll look like a square. Oh, okay. Um, yep, okay, or, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yep, so you, now you're gonna take your two stacks of towels and you're going to stand them um, tassel side down. Okay, tassel side down. Yep, and you're going to butt them up against each other. And then we're going to take this form and wrap it around those. And then this little flap, you got to kind of squeeze it all together to get it to wrap around. And then you tape it. Okay. So I'm watching you. Okay. So the uh, one of the corner, so it kind of fits in the corner there a little bit. This is genius. Did you come up with this all by yourself? I did. Wow. I like it. MacGyver is my hero. Good job. Good job. Now, okay. This would be nice if I had a second pair of hands right now. Okay, all right. Oh, I probably should have got it like a prepared little piece of tape to kind of help me. I'll do that and I'll have it, I'll hang it off my table. Okay, I think, okay. Now, um, yeah, but see mine's not a school. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's like a diamond shape. Yes. Yeah, I think looks well, great. I think I got it. Although my castle is popping out the bottom, but that's okay. I think. Yeah, it'll be funny. once you put it into the bin, you can tuck those under. Now, do you do? Not that it matters, but I'm curious. Do you have your little now? The second flap is you got it tucked on the inside, or you got it tucked on the outside? Um, those I have both of those short flaps on the outside. Okay. 
Mine ended up on the inside. I don't think it matters. I think I can get it a lot tighter, I think. Maybe not. If I have it just on mine because, you know, well, you know, I just I just made it and it is what it is. I don't think it matters either. I think it's just the key is get it on there and however it fits tightly. Right. It just get it get it snug. And you and then and that you're able to tape it. Uh, hmm. Well, I think I'm gonna tuck I'm gonna have mine on the outside too. I think I can maneuver it a little bit better. All right. Hey. Looks fantastic. Thank you. It's working. Yay. Okay. So then I cut a piece of paper towel just a little bit larger than that opening so that I can tuck it in there and lay it on top of the paper, uh, on top of the towels inside to reduce speckling. Okay. The dreaded speckles. Yeah, the dreaded speckles. Okay, so where's my shears? Okay, um, I can, I'm watching you. I can see what you're doing. See, when I was folding, I was so like intense on on my my folding that I wasn't really able to kind of look over and see what you're doing. Now I've, I've I've calmed down a little bit, and I can see. So I'm left-handed, you guys, but I cut I cut right-handed. You're right. Did you just say you're left-handed? No, I didn't know that that you were left-handed. Oh. Both my sister and father were left-handed. I was I was gonna say Scott Walker is also left-handed. I was gonna say if you tell me you're left-handed, it's like <laughs> magic. <laughs> left-handed people are meant to be tie dyers. <laughs> okay, and then you just tucked it on right on down in there. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. And now we're to lay, we're ready to lay some dye down. Um, I'm going to put a mask on. I, I normally would wear a respirator for this, but it makes me sound like Darth Vader. So yeah. I'll put this on. It's a little easier to hear me with this on. Okay. Okay. So you have it down in, in a, like a little uh, a, a bowl. Does it, it doesn't matter what size, does it? So I, yeah, I use a bin like, it's a bin like this. Oh, your mask. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, I don't. I don't have a fancy respirator. I only have our COVID masks or like the hospital masks. I was asking about your tote. Now, do you suggest having a bin about the same size as the project? Yeah, yeah I mean, so um, if we didn't have these forms fitting so snugly around it, I would probably want to put some empty dye jars around this to just press that form against it, but these are fitting nice and snug. So I don't think we need to worry about that. And it just, the bin just needs to be uh, big enough to catch the melt water. Okay. Because we're not necessarily, we're not, we're not trying to make it like a full muck dye. Cause no, you know, I, really, I really only like to get the bottom couple of layers in the muck. Okay. Um, just cause just to like really get it into the tassels and everything but it doesn't need to be fully mucked because, okay. So uh, just the reason why I'm asking just so we can all follow along with my thinking power. If you, if I, I've got various size totes. So as you can see here, I got this from the dollar store. If I was to take this project and stick it in one of my under the bed size totes, all of the muck water would leave the project, but having one that's similar in size, you're going to have, some muck water so that i like the size of those those are really nice yeah these are from the dollar tree and it says it's 5.92 so it's 5.6 liters uh dollar store storage box they come with lids i love these i do a lot of muck dyeing in them um so you know just things to think about uh you know maybe for some projects the size of the container doesn't matter but with this is not an actual muck dye, but when you're muck dyeing, you need to pay attention to your container, in my opinion. Okay. Okay, so, um, okay, dye. So, 
okay. So I have not decided on what colors I'm going to use. And I just want to clarify, I was just teasing about left-handed, right-handed. I know you guys are making jokes. I'm not saying that right-handed, <laughs> I'm merely saying if, you know, Scott's left-handed, I'm left-handed, Amanda's left-handed, we're all left-handed and we're all tie-dyers. Like maybe, just maybe tie-dyeing was like a left-handed, anyways, I, I was just teasing. Of course, anybody is can tie dye. Okay, now for the dye, um, how many colors are you using? Um, I think I'm just going to use two. I'm oh. going to use the Black Magic and uh, Cosmic Energy. I okay. thought about throwing in a little bit of the this one that I mixed myself for some maybe a blue point. I might. I think I'm going to actually do that. So I'll. I'll have, I'll kind of have three, the three points, the three sections be three different colors. Okay. So, okay. The points. Okay. One. Okay. So, all right. So, okay. Um, I'm trying to think about what colors I should do. I have every color except for happy. I, I mean, I have, I don't want to launch uh, Amanda's dyes right yet. Cause I'm, I've got a thing prepared. Do you have any suggestions? I have pretty much every single Dharma color that exists recently anyways. And then I have a handful of uh, Prochem dyes. Do you have any suggestions? Um, well, I, I liked your idea of using stormy skies, uh, okay. stormy sky and, you know, maybe stormy sky with, um, with a gray or uh, do you have any of the uh, like Timberwolf or, uh, Stormageddon or Ashes to Ashes? I do. I've got all of them. I'm going to pick one of those. That was Stormy Gray. So I've got my Stormy Sky. Okay. Uh, Stormy Sky, and then you said Ashes to Ashes? So Ashes to Ashes is what I used on this first towel that gave me the pretty purpley splits. Yeah, it's that's a really beautiful color. I And I... It's I, it's open, so something tells me that I've used it, but I do not recall using this dye. So and it also might be pretty with the uh, spicy plum that you love. Oh, I love spicy plum. Can't get that. I think that would actually be a really cool combo. All right, let's do it. All right, so I've got so I'm going with the Pro Chem colors, you guys: spicy plum, stormy sky, and ash. Well, and Dharma's special order, ashes to ashes. And uh, just real quick. Um, you can get small quantities like this size from uh, Tie Dye Supplies Marketplace on Facebook. Currently, I'm getting them from Kathy Greger. She's fully stocked, uh, and you can get uh, small quantities versus the five pounds that you have to buy from Dharma. So if you're interested, there is a link down below in the description box. It'll take you right over to that Facebook group, and make sure that you click follow or like or whatever it is because if there's new colors that come out and stuff like that in the announcement you won't miss out on anything okay all right now um okay so and how do you apply yours with a spoon um i do use spoons okay so i'm gonna get my mask see i just have i just have like the regular you know cover your face mask i need to get a respirator i just haven't done it um, okay. If I can like show the surface of this better under the camera. Oops. I don't want to tip over my stand here. There we go. Let's see. Okay. Fair I, I, it's a little bit out of, oh, you're just doing one at a time. Cause I can only see half of the project right now. There you go. Okay. I see it all now. Okay, um, so I do both at the same time, and I try, so right now they're set up in kind of a mirror, so I just try to do the same uh, layout on both, and I cover the entire surface of the top, of this top here. And I use, a, I mean, a good amount. I would probably use like three to four spoonfuls of dye. Okay. I make sure that I've got like a good coating on top. Okay. So I'm going to follow your lead because I hear what you're saying, but until I see you do it, I, you know, 
it could be stripes, it could be triangles. I have no idea. So, okay. So I'm going to do this where where those two points meet. There, I'm going to cover that with some of this blue. Okay, so you're gonna do like where they meet and you're gonna like um, like halfway through the triangle or because I'm gonna yeah. get right behind you. Okay. Do you before before I put this mask on, do you uh, are you you're gonna cover the you said the whole surface, right? You're not like leaving white triangle like a little white in the center or anything like that. I am not. Okay. All right, I got it. But but you can. That is an option if you want more white in your final product. Okay. But um, because the dye does filter out as it goes down, you could end up with even more white towards the bottom. So okay. I tend to cover that whole surface so that I have good saturation all the way through. Okay. I do a lot of hand gestures, don't I? <laughs> oh, I, I do too. I talk with my hands like crazy. Like I'm just... Uh, I notice when I'm talking, like I'm standing in front of people talking, I, I can catch them like looking down at my hands because I'm just waving them. So d you're fine. You're totally okay. fine. Okay. So I'm just, you got your 20 seconds ahead of me. So I'm just kind of trying to follow, follow your lead here. I got, I, because of my left-handedness, I need to turn it so I can see my project, but it's all the same. Okay. Okay. So you're laying down the, the I, spicy plum? I, yeah, I started with my spicy plum. Yep. And I'm I'm doing it right where where they meet. And am I good now? Am I just am I just trying to hit those corners or am I striping where they butt together? Um, I mean it's entirely up to you. I kind of did that that region. So I, I did a good size triangular area on each one of them. Okay. So it was like, you know, a good size area of the tip on each of them. Okay. So we're cut we're like we're covering the tips of each and make like making I can kind of see a triangle sort of starting to form on top yes. of my paper towel here. Yeah. Okay. All right. And I'm 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 looking up at you. I, we got that delay, so I'm I'm, I'm looking to see if Oh, I just dropped a whole bunch down the side. Oh, well, that's fine. I mean, like it, you know, it went right, right past the, the little uh, barrier we made here. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to lay some on the far points. I'm using my cosmic energy. So different, different color now. Okay. Yep. Cosmic energy. And um, I'm going to bring that. You know, I've got it in the point, but then I'm bringing it down to touch the blue. Okay. And right. you can see oh. I'm using it. I wonder if I should do on my points. Now, are you going to go to the opposite side and do that, right? Yes. Okay. So I wonder, I just did the spicy plum. I wonder if I should go ashes to ashes on this side and then do the, I don't know if it matters, but then do the stormy sky. I don't know. Which color do you think I should put next? You're the expert on this pattern. Um, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Because, you know, the, the way the folds go, we're, we're having some in each point. So they're, they're all going to end up interacting. Okay. Let's see. Um, so I think... I think I'll do ashes to ashes just because I'm curious and want to open it and see what it looks like. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the powder itself looks like a nice purple. Um, I put it so when I, I organize my drawers uh, in colors and I had ashes to ashes down at the bottom with my browns and my blacks and my bronze and my golds, kind of like the miscellaneous colors. Yeah. Uh, I thought this was going to be uh, like ash, like gray. And no, this is more like a purple, isn't it? Yeah, it's a purpley gray. Yeah, so I probably should move it up into into my purples. I'd probably use it more because I don't use a lot of grays and browns and 
I'm a rainbow kind of girl, so I don't I don't use a lot of earth tones and um and then if I don't see the dye, then I don't think to use it, you know. So well, I find that I am using more of the grays and the blacks in my shibori because they're more complex. It takes all these different colors to make blacks and grays. That's a and very good point. I did not yeah. even that because you're absolutely right in order to make those darker colors you have to use more of the components yes okay so i'm just looking now here so i think i either didn't make my uh spicy plum big enough or i'm not making these big enough let's see i think i'm gonna add a little more make my triangle here oh yeah like i right now as i'm spreading it i can see uh, like red, like fuchsia. I mean, I don't know what they use to make this, but I can see like the red dye powder chunks in my ashes to ashes. I'm excited. This is going to be so exciting. <laughs> it's, it, you know, I love washout time with these because it's always like, it's it's such a random unknown, like what's gonna come out. Yeah, I love that. Uh, I think it was Mr. Tie Dye that coined the phrase "the hippie Christmas." You know. <laughs> yes. You, uh, you guys have heard that, right? Hippie Christmas, because it's true. You know, you get to open up your present on washout day. Okay, ashes to ashes. Okay, now I'm going to add some stormy sky and then I'm going to go back and like look at how yours looks and beef up because I'm clearly not making my um my triangles big enough. Yeah, I use it it takes a lot of dye to do these towels. So, well, yeah, and, that, I, and then, you know what? That's a very good point too. These things are thick, you guys, and you want to make sure you got enough dye to getting it all the way through to the bottom. I mean, it's good. You want that gradient look, but you got to have enough to travel. And if you're and, and another thing to keep in mind with these is after the ice melt, if I see any dye left on that top surface, I make a bottle with hot Glauber salt solution. Okay. So I'll do like, um, let me go grab one of my dye bottles. Okay. Yeah. So um, I, I'm I'm adding my dye, but I'm realizing that I'm just kind of adding it like I would to like a t-shirt. I, I think I need to be like really beefing it up a lot more than I am. Okay. Yeah. I well, and I mean, originally said like one to two teaspoons of each color. It's like two, two, you know, generous spoonfuls of each color. I and mean, there's quite a bit of dye. So yeah. this is the dye bottle I use, and I'll heat this up in the microwave for a minute with a teaspoon of Glauber salt in it. So it gets it nice and hot. And then I just slowly drizzle it over the top to melt any residual bits of dye. Okay. All right. All right. I see that. So that's a very unique um, nozzle or tip that you got on there. Did you bend that yourself or did it come that way? It came that way. Yeah, so afterwards, uh, Margot, like later on when you sit down and relax, if you could send me the links to everything that you that we're talking about in this video so that I can put them in the de description box of this live feed so that yeah. people will be able to, um, I mean, if you can, that way people will be able to find the tools that, we're, that you're uh, demonstrating for us. You bet. I, I would I'm great. going to go get ice. Okay, go get your ice while I uh, continue to put my um, dye on here. So I'm going, I don't know that I've ever put this thick of amount of dye. And I don't know if I'm putting too much, you guys, or if I'm not putting enough. We, we will find out. But this is my, this is my learning curve. This will be my first time. And it's going to help me know for next time if I needed more dye, less dye. I mean, we'll see what the saturation looks like. So I'm so excited. This is this is a lot of fun doing something I've never done before, and uh, and I'm and I've been wanting to do this for forever. Like I've been I've been eyeballing shibori 
um, videos for uh, well over a year now. And I've just been too afraid to try. So, so far, so good, you guys. I, I hope you guys are after this. And for those of you that watch it on the replay, I hope that you you, you do this. And make sure when you when you guys make yours, will you please tag me and tag Margo uh, on Facebook so that uh, we can see? Because I I'm I'm excited. I want to see everybody's work. Uh, okay. Okay. For your ice, what what are you using there? Is that bullet ice? It is. It's from my little ice maker. My little. Uh, countertop ice maker. Okay. I have one of those. Uh, you know, it's a great little ice machine, but it just does not make enough ice. I have to babysit it. Yes. Um, it takes a whole day to make a bag of ice. <laughs> it 100%. And so, um, at some point, I know you and I were talking about it, you know, when and if you ever can, I definitely recommend I have, I have uh, several, like, um, I don't know, a lot of like, four ice machine unboxings and just updates and tutorials. I recommend you guys, if you're serious about ice dyeing to try to save up, and get yourself an ice machine that can keep up with a, a ice dye demand. That little bullet is a great machine, but it, it's it's a lot of work. Okay, so you all the way up to the top. Yes. Oh, I got to take this mask off. I can't breathe. Huh. Okay, now did you do any soda ash sprinkle or anything like that? I don't. Okay. See, I do. And I don't know if it's necessary. It's just, it's become my, my ritual, like my, my habit, because that's how I learned. And so it's just, you know, what I do. So I'm almost wondering, I think, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my large industrial ice machine ice. So Margo, I'm going to step aside and I'm going to grab my ice real quick. You're going to use your nugget? No, I'm going to actually use my, um, I don't think I have enough nugget ice to fill this up like you did. So I'm going to actually use my commercial size ice cubes, which I bear, I rarely use. So I'm just right over here. I'm going to grab a bag. No, 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 no. Hush, 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 hush. So, um, so I've got the two ice machines. Oh, this is really frozen solid. Sorry, guys. So for, for ice bags, I bought I bought these on Amazon, but they they shred so fast. So they they aren't really that much better. I I don't know if there's a good solution on bags for ice. Oh. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay. That's what I have too. I've got, uh, cause I just had to pound it on the floor and it's getting pretty chunked up. Like it's tearing through the plastic. So, um, this, this, uh, commercial, or I guess it's commercial. This ice has been in the freezer for a couple of months now. So it'll, it'll kind of get snowy, but this is the type of ice cubes it makes. You guys see me use the, uh, the Frigidaire Nugget Ice all the time. And I have nothing against this commercial ice. It's just, you. I had to pound it out on the floor and, you know, it's just so much easier to grab my, my Nugget Ice. Okay, I'm gonna get a nice layer on there and then I'm just gonna dump it in. I just try not to disturb the, the dye too much. Woo, I can already see the stormy sky. I love that color. I don't use it enough. But yeah, I don't know if you guys can see the ice cubes. And the uh, the nugget ice machine and the industrial machine were basically the same price and they, they both serve their purpose um, in, in different ways. But same idea. 
you know, if you're if you're ice dying a lot, it's having something, uh, the bullet machine, uh, the nugget ice, anything, it, it it will pay for itself. I don't know what what your ice costs, but here it's about two fifty or three dollars a bag. And if yeah. I was, you know, I'm buying four to six bags every day, you know, do the math. I mean, that adds up, you guys. I know it's a big expense up front, but it will pay for itself. Okay, now just fill it all the way up to the top. Yes. Okay, and then you said uh, if, if there's a lot of undissolved dye, then to press the hot water uh, uh, salt solution. So like uh, the pariah method, basically. Yes, but not a soda ash pariah. This is with the Glauber salt. That, that's true. Although you could, you probably could do a soda ash pariah. I don't know why not. Do you know why, like why Glauber salt? Um, you know, I haven't been tied on. I do. And I don't understand. If you could, if you know, please share. So Glauber salt causes a cathartic reaction. And so it helps um, drive the dye into the fibers or it, it helps open the fibers so that they can draw the dye in. But it like it has an effect on the fibers themselves to pull that dye in. And um, it's especially helpful with uh, turquoise and yellow, like lemon yellow. Um, so like there's certain greens that really react well with Glauber salt. Um, but yeah, it, it's quite helpful. So it opens up the fibers to allow the dye to flow and bond. Am I, am I understanding that correctly? It, it, yeah, it, it allows it to be drawn in and, and bond, yeah. It softens the fibers so it can receive, because turquoise, greens, tur you know, things that have turquoise in them, turquoise is a harder color to work with. And stop me and correct me if I'm wrong, but turquoise requires heat, longer batch times, to get the true vibrancy, whereas some other colors, like maybe yellow or is it red or it's yellow? One of them, maybe I think maybe it's yellow doesn't require as much batch time and heat to still achieve a beautiful color or something like that. I don't know. Well, I, I know that like lemon yellow is one of those ones that always stays undissolved on top of my projects. And so I go oh, back me. in. Yeah, so that's one of the ones that I go back in with that hot glauber salt solution to dissolve it. And um, like on my strawberry skies t-shirt, um, you can, I mean, I've had a couple of strawberry skies projects where you see these sort of mid-range uh, little splashes of yellow. That's, this, this was treated with that hot glauber salt solution. This was like the first one I did with that. And um, it got really excellent detail and absorption in those lower layers yeah that's really pretty and that's the strawberry sky and yours has uh, like the the lighter colors and and see i don't get a lot of that with mine like mine stays kind of dark and that's the fun thing about learning how to dye and understanding what dye does is different methods can achieve different colors from the same jar of dye so, and different fibers. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like rayon versus cotton versus... Uh, no two cottons are the same either, I, which I learned. Like air, heirloom jersey cotton versus like the Gildan regular shirt. They dye so differently. I do not like heirloom jersey. It's a, it feels nice as a t-shirt to wear, but I don't like the way it takes dye at all. But that's me. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back in the freezer. It's so hot in here, I'm afraid that'll melt. Okay, so I just, I filled up my uh, my thing all the way to the brim, and now we're done with this, right? Set it aside, yep. set it and forget yep. it, and then let it do its thing. If there's a bunch of undissolved dye, hit it with that hot water to help, or hot salt water to, uh, now I've got the Glauber salt and you've got Dyer's salt. You think that's fine? Like, cause I don't have. 
Uh, no, I, I use Glauber salt. Oh, oh, okay. I thought you showed me a picture of something called Dyer salt. I don't know. Well, because you and I have had a discussion about Dyer salt. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm new to it. I, I just got it from ProChem and I've only sprinkled it on a couple times and I'm not sure what it's doing. So I'm going to move this in and I'm going to clean up my table. I've got dye everywhere. Yeah, that's why I put the towel down. Um, so the Glauber salt does not dissolve well with ice. So that's one of the reasons why I dissolve it in hot water. Um, because I had found when I would put it with my dye projects, sometimes it would stay undissolved on the surface. The the Glauber salt would, or the yeah. yeah yeah the Glauber salt likes hot water. Okay. Like and when I when I try to dissolve Glauber salt in cold water, it clumps just like soda ash does in cold water. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, yeah, uh, definitely soda ash. I've had that. I was just mixing up some the other day and I was trying to cut corners and like do, you know, pour in two cups without mixing it while, you know, while I was getting more water and I came back and I had shards just floating around in there everywhere. So it don't cut corners. But um, so I've been using it like this, the soda ash sprinkle with the globber salt and just sprinkling it on top. And I felt like it was making my ice melt really quick, but it could also just be in my mind. Um, but I didn't, I didn't notice it, um, you know, chunking up or anything like that. But like I said, I'm really new to it and I need to do a side by side experiment and see like one, one project with it, one project without, and, and see for me if I can even notice a big difference just with the regular ice dye method. Okay, now for the little guys, the little hand towels, are we gonna do the same cutting board method? Yes, and we're gonna take one cutting board and we're going to cut it in half. So I've got it here on my cutting board. Um, so it's long ways this direction, short ways this direction. And I'm going to cut it along that long way to make it two long pieces. So two pieces that are, what is that, 11 inches wide? Uh, no, 14 inches wide. Okay, so let's see, Where's my ruler. So you're splitting it right in half is what I'm hearing. Or wait. Yeah. Long... Yeah. I'm making two long pieces that are five and a half inches wide. Oh, the long way, like, okay. Five. Okay. I see. I, I had mine going, I guess you would say mine was going horizontal and I needed to go vertical on my table, I think. So if I measure uh, it. So if I measure it this way, it's 11 inches wide. Right. So you're going to cut it at the five and a half inch. Yes. So, so right in half. Okay. Yep. Got it. So five and a half inches. Let's see if I can make a nice straight line. And then I definitely want to get. So I have a Cricut machine and I've never opened it. And I know that I see a lot of projects on YouTube and stuff that use that, uh, like pizza cutter tool you have. I know I'm, I'm technical, um, and, and the board. So I, I want to get that because I want to try to start playing with my Cree cut. Cause I think I could probably start making some cool, cool projects. Oh, that didn't work. Like I, I was, I saw a lady make some wall art with um, like these, um, she made like, she little, made like little flowers, flowers. but I don't want to have to get all that, get all that paper. paper. Okay. Okay. So then I'm going to be folding it for mine. I measured mine and they're like, just five inches. So I'm going to mark this at the five uh, inches. I'm here. I'm, 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 I'm hearing myself, myself and I'm not hearing. Oh, did I That's, weird. That's weird. I can see me. I'm still not hearing myself. Okay. 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 Okay.
I can, I can. Huh. Huh. Wonder what's going on here. So every time, every time, I says it back to me. I don't know. So somebody was saying that um, they yeah. just yeah. they just folded theirs like a piece of paper. They didn't bother with all bending it over a ruler. So I'm going to try that to create my little bends. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm, so getting, I'm, I'm, getting I'm getting feedback. Getting feedback the off, the off is, up. Is, is, is your phone is your plugged phone in, plugged and, in your and your battery is going good? It's plugged in. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Let's see if I can see my battery. My battery's at 100%. And it looks okay on my screen here. Yeah, I can yeah, see. I can see. Uh, uh, I can. So, yeah, so, they're, yeah they're, 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 they're saying it's the same one. one. The echo, echo, all, echo. Of sudden, all of a sudden. Go, go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I don't know how to fix it. Other than Other stop, stop, stop. Stop. Okay, so so since we're so going to part, part two, you guys, you guys, we'll come, come right, come back. right back. Yeah, yeah. So you want to just start a new one? Yeah. So I'm yeah, gonna, so I'm gonna, up 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 and just and immediately, just immediately uh, send you the uh, send you the we'll start right we'll back. Start right back. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, so I. So I. And I'm actually. And I'm actually. I'm gonna, I'm gonna restart, restart my phone. My phone. Okay. Will you restart, Will you your, restart phone your phone too, too, just, in too, case? just in case? Sure. Okay. So, okay, so come back, come everybody. Back, five, everybody minutes. five minutes. Or less. Or less. Okay. okay. All right. Here we go.